For this month, we're working on a series that we called Battles. Last Sunday, we talked about pressures of life. And today, we'll discuss about a battle that is bigger than you. If you have your Bibles with you, please turn it to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I'll be reading from English Standard Version and let's, let me read to you verse 17. The word of the Lord says, you will not need to fight in this battle. Tell the person next to you, come on, tell the person next to you, you will not, not need, come on, to fight in this battle. Church, stand firm, hold your position, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, and the Lord will be with you. No person in his right mind would like to go to a battle. Most nations are preparing for battles. Though, of course, they're, they're saying that they don't have a nuclear weapon, but we know that a lot of big nations have nuclear weapon, but they're not admitting that they have one. They're prepared for battles. But I believe their president, their prime minister or king is preventing battle to happen. We all know that it's devastating whenever war happens in a nation. However, what happens when a battle is in front knocking at your door? What do you do when the devil drops something at your door for you to deal with. You didn't cause it. You didn't choose it. You didn't anticipate it. This is what happened to Jehoshaphat. In verses 1 and 2, after this, the Moabites and Ammonites and with them some of the Munites came against Jehoshaphat for battle. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, A great multitude is coming against you from Edom, from beyond the sea, and behold, they are in Hazazon Tamar, that is Engedi. For the previous chapter, Jehoshaphat was just setting up Jerusalem after the Lord delivered Judah. Then here in chapter 20, the Moabites, the Ammonites, and Munites came against Jehoshaphat, for battle. Jehoshaphat didn't have time to prepare for a strategy. The battle is coming and it's coming now. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Heavenly Father, I don't know what battle that my brother or sister is going through right now, but what we know that Lord, regardless of the battle that we have in front of us, you are always ahead of us. We just pray, Father, O oh God, that, Lord, you will speak to us. Let your word, O oh God, germinate, Lord, in our hearts right now. And we just pray, Father, that, Lord, you will be, Lord, glorified this morning as we speak of your word. Lord, minister to your people this morning. Lord, hide me behind your cross. Let there be more of you and less of me. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. And we all say, can we give a round of applause to our God? Friends, have you ever received a phone call that shook your world? You're just having a great day, then suddenly a bomb is dropped at your feet. Has someone knocked at your door to bring you bad news? You don't know what to do. You can't find a solution. You know what Jehoshaphat did? In verses 3 to 4 of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, Then Jehoshaphat was afraid and set his face to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah assembled to seek help from the Lord. From all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. The response of the king is not to find the best warriors in town, okay, but to go to the Creator. He did not make a plan, but he went to God. Church, when a battle chooses you, 
you start your preparation by seeking the Lord. Jehoshaphat made up his mind who to go to. But do you know that Jehoshaphat was not like that before? There was a time that he hooked up with, with uh, King Ahab in 2 Chronicles chapter 18. He didn't go to, to God first. He hooked up with King Ahab so that he can have allies when wars come to him. So God got angry with him. Church, aren't we like that? When we have problems, we always ask people for help before asking God. Would you agree with me? Okay? Are there times that when you have problem, when problem comes, instead of going to God, you go to people that you think can help you? Am I right? As a person beside you, are you like that? It's just like God is our second option. Why was God angry with King Jehoshaphat when he helped King Ahab? King Ahab was a bad king. If you are not familiar with King Ahab, he's the king to whom you know uh, God sent Elijah, and Elijah said it will not rain for three years. That's how wicked he was. God was angry with King Ahab, and Jehoshaphat okay, went to King Ahab. And he, is an ally. he was an ally of King Ahab. And that's why God got angry with Jehoshaphat for helping King Ahab. For your information, when Jehoshaphat helped Ahab, it almost cost him his life. Here's a lesson that we can learn. Tell the person next to you, don't fight the battle that is not yours to fight. Come on, tell the person beside you. I remember my dad and I saw a commotion in the mall. Okay, a couple was, you know, fighting, literally fighting. Okay, and then suddenly a man intervened. Intervened. And suddenly, instead of the couple fighting each other, suddenly the couple is already fighting the man who's just helping out. That's why my dad told me, Timmy, mind your own business. Tell the person next to you, mind your own business. Don't fight the battle that is not yours to fight. The surest way to get yourself in trouble is for you to take on a battle that doesn't belong to you. This is why Christians don't need to always share their opinion on every subject that is presented as a cultural or political issue. When someone posts on their FB account, you don't need to comment if you don't like what's posted. Tell the person beside you, you don't need to comment all the time. Okay, who among you likes to comment on every FB post of your friends? Right? Church, you don't need to share all the controversial FB posts and attract debates. You have to choose your battles. Tell the person next to you, you have to choose your battles. Folks, don't waste your energy and time fighting battles that are not yours. Or else you don't have the energy and time to fight the battle that are yours. I, I've been seeing people wasting their time replying to the comments of the comments that they made in FB. They can no longer do their tasks at home or schoolwork or work properly. Church, I'm a pastor of this church and overseer of Visayas, so I will not meddle with the problems of our mother church or other churches outside my jurisdiction. I have my own family, so I will not meddle with the problems of other family if they're not asking me for help. I have to fight the battles that are mine to fight. So I don't need to, to mind other people's battle. Friends, do you know how to tell if you're fighting the wrong battles? Do you know how to tell it? If you're fighting the wrong battles? If you're trying to control others, controlling your colleagues, controlling your classmates, controlling people around you, you're fighting the wrong battle. Why? You cannot control others. You can influence others. 
but you can control them. You can influence others, but you cannot change their hearts. Who among you have been married for at least five years? Anyone here married for at least five years? Please raise your hands. Who among you would say that you can control your spouse? The wives don't want to raise their hands. Right? Whenever husbands and wives are quarreling, the husband would say, hey, I'm the head of the family. The wife would say, but I'm the neck that controls the head. You know, if, if you want to control the person around, uh, the, the people around you, let me tell you, you know, you'll get frustrated. Why? You cannot even control your own children. You cannot even control your spouse. And you want to control other people? Come on. Okay? Tell the person beside you, it's not your battle. You know, if someone tries to draw you to some gossip and they ask you, have you heard about so and so? What do you think about so and so? You know what's the proper answer for that? You know what's the proper answer for that? Okay? You just say, sorry, but it's none of my business. Sorry, it's none of my business. Each of us have our own personal drama in life. It's more than enough. We don't need to get involved into the drama of other people. In our core team, we try to reflect on ourselves after each discipleship material that we discuss or watch. I don't want us to talk about other people. Jehoshaphat didn't run around to check on what other people are doing. He ran to the Lord. He knew he has his own problems to deal with. He learned to inquire of the Lord. Maybe Jehoshaphat can fight one enemy. But three enemies are challenging him for a battle. It's bigger than him. Church, do you have something bigger than you? Do you have a problem right now? Do you have, are, are you in a situation right now that is a lot bigger than you? Jehoshaphat was faced, was, was challenged by the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Munites. But do you know that we also have three enemies? We have three enemies, you know? What are they? The world, the flesh, the devil. Okay? We can find that in 1 John chapter 2. Okay? The devil influences you to do the wrong thing. The flesh desires to do the wrong thing. And the world tells you to do what the majority is doing even if it's wrong. The world, the flesh, and the devil oppose God's purpose for you. It may be easy to fight one, but let me tell you, it's not easy to fight three at the same time. How do I fight the devil if I'm struggling with my flesh? How do I fight the world if there's a part of me that wants to do it? I can fight one, but I can't fight them all. How can you raise godly children if the world's culture is within their reach, within their pocket, in their cell phone? How can you disciple people if their focus is off the flesh and the world? They're bigger than me, so I need the Lord. Tell the person beside you and say, I need the Lord. Church, what do you do when the battle is bigger than you? What do you do? Let's check on what Jehoshaphat did. First, resolve to seek the Lord. Jehoshaphat resolved to seek the Lord. When, when his enemies challenged him, he gathered the people in Judah to get help from God. He is now surrounded with the right people. Before he was with King Ahab, now he's with the right people. He did not go to King Ahab anymore. He's not asking his friends on what to do with his problems. He's not looking at what majority would do. He went to the Lord. 
He doesn't have plans. Church, when you are in trouble, God should not be your plan B. You know, a lot of us, when we have problems, right? Especially for us guys, guilty as charged. We like to find solution in every problem, in the family, at work, in the business. We like to find solutions, okay? God is just plan B. But let me tell you, when you are in trouble, God should not be your plan B. God should always be your plan A. Tell, the, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, God should always be your plan A. Folks, if you're facing a battle bigger than you, I want you to pray. I want you to fast for at least one week. How many you have done fasting? Anyone here? Fisting, fisting. Who among you have done fisting? Fasting, gamay lang ang kamot mo. mo. Church, I, I, I don't know if you're going through a big battle right now in your life. Why not try prayer and fasting? Tell the person next to you, pray and fast. I, I, I know lechon is lami. I know buwad is lami. But let me tell you right now, if you are facing a big problem in your life, a big battle that you have never gone through before, let me tell you, you have to pray. You have to fast. Okay, I want you to pray just like how Jehoshaphat prayed. And this is our second point. Okay, what do you do when you're facing a problem that is bigger than you? Repeat what God has promised and done for you. Verses 5 and 7, it says here, And Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. In your hand are power and might so that none is able to withstand you. Did you not, our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend. It's nice to remind yourself of what God has done for you. Who among you, who among you have been blessed by the Lord? Who among you have been healed by the Lord? Who among you have been provided by the Lord? Okay, my, my, my question is, do you go back and think of all those good things that God has done for you, your family. It's also nice to repeat on what God has promised you in your prayer time while you're reading the Bible. Church, this is not to remind God because He never forgets. But repeating His promises to you in, in the Bible increases your faith. When you have battles ahead of you, shift your focus from what is coming against you to the one who reigns above you. When you're in trouble, speak of what the Lord has done to his people in the Bible. Speak of what the Lord has done for you and your family. This is not to remind God, but to remind yourself that God is good. You know, sometimes when we have problems, we forget that God is good. It's just like when we sing, God is good all the time. It's just a cliche, but it's not a reality. But whenever you remind yourself of the promises of God in the Bible, whenever you, 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 you remind yourself of what God has done for you, for your family, okay? when you were down, the Lord lifted you up. When you were broken, the Lord provided for you. Let me tell you, when you do that, you will always be reminded that God is good. Tell the person next to you, say, God is good. Folks, are you crying right now because of the problems that you're going through? Who among you would admit it's not your first time to experience turmoil? Who among you would admit it's not your first time to experience trouble? turmoil in life. Anyone here? Okay? It's not the first time 
that you don't know the right path or the right solution to your problem, it's not the first time that you're hurting. It's not the first time that your heart is broken. This is not the first time that you didn't have enough money. This is not the first diagnosis from the doctor that hit you hard. I like the last part of verse 7. It says here, Give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend. Can you please say forever? Can you please say forever? Church, it says here again, what? Give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend. If God gave his promises to you, if his promises to the descendants of Abraham is forever, then he cannot stop now. Okay? Church, let me tell you, God's promise is forever. Okay? I want you to hear it. I want you to absorb it. Let me tell you, God's promise to you is forever. If his promises to Abraham is forever, if he considers Abraham as his friend, who among you are friend of God in this room today? Right? That's why we, are, we have a song we sing when we sing, okay, I'm a friend of God. Right? If you are a friend of God, let me tell you today, God's promise to you is forever. God is true to his promises. If you are a friend of God, just like Abraham is God's friend, then you are in good hands because his promise for you is forever. And then verses 8 and 9, it says, And they have lived in it and have built for you in it a sanctuary for your name, saying if disaster comes upon you, the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this house and before you, for your name is in this house. For your name is in this house. For your name is in this house and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. When Jehoshaphat went to the Lord in the temple, he's expecting God to be true to his promises. Folks, cry out to God in your affliction, and God will provide you salvation. Verse 10 says, And now behold, the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir whom you, should, you would not let Israel invade when they came from the land of Egypt and whom they avoided and did not destroy. Here somehow King Jehoshaphat was blaming God and at the same time he's saying, Lord, before when, you know, when I went to war with King Ahab, it was my fault. But this time, Lord, it's not my fault. We, 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 Israel, when we, when we left Egypt, we wanted to conquer these places. Moab, Ammon, but you didn't let us conquer them. And now, they're, what they're doing is instead of, you know, instead of giving thanks to us, they want to go, okay, they want to fight us. Church, for your information, the Ammonites and Moabites are descendants of Lot, okay, the nephew of Abraham. Sometimes the Ammonites and Moabites are at peace with Israel. Sometimes they are at war with them. God has his reasons why he didn't allow the Israelites to invite, invade Ammon and Moab after they left Egypt. Folks, we don't question the will and decision of God because he knows what's best for his people in a particular time and situation. We just have to trust God to do what's best for us. We just have to trust God to keep his promises. And then verse 11, it says here, Behold, they reward us by coming to drive us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. Church, this is what I have learned in life. If it is God who gave it, it is his responsibility to protect it. Do I hear an amen? If it is God's possession, it's God's problem. Let me tell you today, the person next to you, look at the person next to you. Why are you laughing? <laughs> I just asked you to look at the person next to you. The person next to you 
is God's possession. Would you agree with me? Si Sister Bimilani agree. <laughs> Come on. The person next to you. Look at the person next to you. Come on. The person next to you is God's possession. Why? You are God's treasure. You are God's possession. Why? He even gave His Son for you and I to be saved. Would you agree with me? The person beside you is a child of God. The person beside you is a son of God. The person beside you is a daughter of God. So if you are God's possession, it is His responsibility to protect you and to provide for you. Do I hear an amen? And then verse 12, it says here, O oh, our God, will you not execute judgment on them? For we are powerless. Say powerless. Have you gone, have you experienced situations in life when you feel that you're powerless? For, for, for young people, you're, you're, you're powerless of your grade. You know you did your best, but your best is not good enough. You're powerless. And you're, you're, you're just praying to God, Lord, come on. Even just 75, pwede na Lord. Palihug lang. Have you been in a situation when you are, you know, you are bankrupt, you don't know how to pay your debts, you're powerless, you don't know how to do it, you don't know what to do in life. Church, it says here, for we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Are you in a situation right now and you don't know what to do. Maybe you're saying, I don't know how to fight. I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how to pay my debt. I don't know how to continue my schooling. Friends, our situation might be bigger than us, but it's definitely not bigger than our God. God is telling you right now, God is telling you right now, if you'll change the focus, He'll win the fight. Maybe it's about time that you, you shift your focus from your big problem to your big God. Let me repeat that again. Maybe it's about time for you to shift your focus from your big problem to a big God. Tell the person next to you. Tap the person next to you. Tell the person beside you, help is on the way. Let me wrap up our message with the third point. What do you do when, you know, your problem is bigger than you? Rest in the Lord's power. Tell the person beside you, rest in the Lord's power. Verses 13 and 14 Meanwhile, all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, son of Benaiah, son of Jael, son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph in the midst of the assembly. Perhaps you're thinking right now, Pastor, why didn't you just skip of those boring names? Come on, you enjoy, you know, reading Numbers, the book of Numbers, right? When, when you read all those names, oh, come on, Lord, let me skip, let me skip. Okay. I was guilty of that before, but you know what? While, while I was reading this, it's really a revelation. It was really a revelation to me. While I was reading this, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, son of Mataniah, Levite of the sons of Asaph. Let me tell you the revelation here. When the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the, the, the Spirit of God also came upon the Zech Zechariah, his father. When I was reading this, you know, I was assured by the Lord, Timi, when my spirit comes upon you, 
my spirit will also come upon Isaac. My spirit will also come upon Kate. My, my spirit will also come upon Bea. My spirit will also come upon their children and their children's children as long as they're obeying me. Let me tell you today, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I know salvation is personal. Tell the person beside you, salvation is personal. Whether you like it or not, your spouse cannot save you with his or her salvation. For young people who are here right now, let me tell you today, your parents' salvation cannot bring you to heaven. It has to be you. Tell the, tell the person next to you, it has to be you. You have to make decision. Am I right? But here's the promise of God. Whenever His Spirit okay, comes upon you, and your children and your children's children will also receive Jesus as His Lord and Savior, your whole, the Holy Spirit will also be upon them. And that is the promise of God. Let me tell you today, church, it's not about your power. It's about your position. Tell the person beside you, it's about your position. You know what's your position? You know what's your position? You're a child of God. Look at the person beside you. They may not look like an angel, but they are a child of God. <laughs> you know, when I, when, when I, whenever I tell you to look at your person next to you, you know, you're a story. Come on, look at the person next to you. Okay? It's not about his power. It's not about her power. It's about his or her position in the Lord. Say amen. amen. And verses 15 to 17, and he said, Listen, all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, that says the Lord to you, do not be afraid. Tell the person next to you, do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Tell the person next to you, do not be dismayed. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them. Behold, they will come up by the ascent of Ziz. You will find them at the end of the valley, is of the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm. Hold your position and see the salvation of the Lord in your behalf. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them and the Lord will be with you. Good thing Jehoshaphat sought the Lord first. Otherwise, if they fought, they will lose the battle. One against three. When you don't know the nature of the battle, you won't know the strategy for the battle. Some of you are losing your life's battle because you're fighting on the wrong level. Some of you are losing, let me repeat, some of you are losing your life's battle because you're fighting at the wrong level. Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against cosmic powers, over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. We usually fight people, and we think people are our enemies. Who among you have enemies? Raise your hand. For those who did not raise their hand, can you please tell them, plastic. Come on. Who among you have enemies? But let me tell you today, your enemies, those people, they are not your enemies. They hurt you because they're hurt. Hurting people will hurt people. You know, let me tell you, save your energy for the real battle. Sometimes it takes more faith not to fight back. Sometimes it takes more faith to let God be great in your situation. 
Because if you manipulate it, you're going to mess it up. Tell the person on your right, you don't need to be afraid. Come on, tell the person next to you, you don't need to be afraid. Tell the person on the other side, you don't need to fight. Why? The battle is not yours, but God's. Amen? Amen? I believe the Lord deserves the best clap of praise. You know, I, I, I did not post it on the PowerPoint here, but let me just read to you verses 21 to 22. I hope you have your Bibles with you in Second Chronicles chapter 20. Let me just read to you verse 21 to 22. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and praise Him for the splendor of His holiness as they went out at the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for His love endures forever. Verse 22, I want you to listen to this. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading and they were defeated. Folks, when you have battles in life, shift worry to worship. Tell the person next to you, come on, shift worry to worship. Sige, sige, palakpakan na to tong ginom. That's for him, that's not for me. When your battle is too big for you, it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to our big God. Can I be honest with you? We often say, you know, the battle is the Lord's. But we're worrying like it's ours. Who among you would admit that? When we have big problems, oh, the battle is the Lord's. But you're worrying, you're anxious. Oh, am I right? We wasted all our strength in worrying when we could have been worshiping. You know, church, quit doing God's job for Him. Give it to the Lord. Who among you have battles to fight today? Who among you have battles to fight today? Bear in mind, Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Let us stop worrying. Let us start worshiping. You know, it's hard to have problems financially, am I right? But that's nothing compared to, you know, when you are facing a situation in life that you're going to lose someone that you love. Especially for, for us as parents, it's really, you know, of course, it's really heartbreaking when, whenever a person that you love so dearly will, will be gone soon. But you know what? When you are in this situation where the battle is bigger than you, Sometimes it's not just praying that we can do, but we can just worship the Lord. Whenever we go beyond, whenever we, we, we go beyond our situation and we're able to worship the Lord, then the Lord sees your heart, the Lord sees your faith, and the Lord moves. That's why today, I don't know, you know how big your challenges are, doesn't matter. We have a big God. Can we raise a hallelujah today? Can we raise a hallelujah today? Do I hear an amen? Yes. Tell the person next to you, the Lord has answered your prayer today. Come on. Do you believe that? Church, do you believe that? As we worship the Lord, Come on, let's give Him praise. As we worship the Lord, 
the Lord moves. As we worship the Lord, the Lord hears us. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Heavenly Father, I can sense the heavy hearts of my brothers and sisters. I may not know their situation, but you know their situation. And their situation right now is bigger than they can ever handle. Lord, can you just, oh God, speak to them. Speak to them, oh God, today. As they raise a hallelujah, oh God, Lord, in their room, as they raise a hallelujah, oh God, we just pray, Father, oh God, that Lord, you will just storm their room, oh God, with your presence. As they raise a hallelujah, oh God, I pray that Lord, you will just assure them, oh God, of your love. As they raise a hallelujah, oh God, we just pray that Lord, they would experience, oh God, a miracle, oh God, just like what we have read and what we have experienced before. As we raise a hallelujah, Father, oh God, that Lord, we pray that the impossible will become possible. Holy Spirit, Lord, we thank you so much for you spoke to us today. A lot of us, oh God, go through, oh God, situations that sometimes we cannot bear anymore. But Lord, one thing we know if we have a big problem, it's not for us to fight. It's yours. The battle is yours. Lord, we surrender them all to you. Lord, we usher, Lord, our burdens, our worries. We usher the sickness of our loved ones. We, we usher to you, O oh God, our problems in the family. And we believe, O oh God, that in the name of Jesus, in the the name of Jesus you have heard our prayers today we glorify you we magnify you and we believe that Lord you are sealing oh God this prayer with the blood of Jesus we all say amen and amen <laughs>